Maya. Two hours later. Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be working on a fluid transport problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps our channel. So the problem that we're going to be working with today, um, please make sure to pause the video in order to copy the problem on your notes so that we can follow along, goes as follows. So we have this water plant and it converts uh, converts salt water into pure water. The pure water leaves the plant and then must be pumped uphill. At point one, the uh, gauge pressure reads 330 kilopascals. The pipe has a constant area of 0.9 meters squared. So part A is the pressure at the end of the pipe must be at or above atmospheric pressure in order to pump water out. What is the maximum height change from point one to point two? Hint. At the maximum height, the current would be really small and we would ignore IR. Okay, so as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. So I have the uh, little drawer and here's a pump and the two points that we're interested in really are points one and two over here, just as the picture suggested. So basically uh, what we have to find is, so this pressure its gauge pressure is 330 kilopascals and that is kind of like a given, it's gonna stay like that. And this one over here has to be at least atmospheric pressure in order for this to work. Now, what the question is asking us is, what is the maximum height difference that we can have between points one and two? Uh, now, before we answer this question, let's just go ahead and start with our Bernoulli equation so that we can better understand the problem. So, as usual, I like to start with the entire Bernoulli equation. Which is this. And now I'm going to cancel out the terms that, um, you know, are not relevant over here. So, first of all, delta P is going to stay because we do have a pressure difference. And I'm never really going to cancel that out. Uh, the potential energy density term is going to stay because I do have a height difference, so I'm just going to copy that. Now this term over here we are actually going to cancel out because this area and this area are exactly the same. Both of them are 0.9 meters squared and because we don't really have a change then this term is equal to zero in this problem. Now in terms of the pump, we do have a pump, uh, but the thing is that I'm analyzing points one to two and the pump is before point one. So because the pump isn't anywhere in between these two points, this term is actually gonna go away. Now, uh, the problem is saying that there is some resistance on the pipe, however, at the maximum height, the current would be really small and we should ignore this term. So because the instructions are telling me that in order to find this maximum value, uh, whenever this is happening, this is zero, then I just have to cancel that out. So my Bernoulli equation for this scenario is just going to be reduced to this. I'm, I'm going to have a pressure difference, I'm going to have a height change, and then this is going to be equal to zero. Now the thing that we need to um, figure out here is just by looking at the equation, I can see that there must be a maximum because this term is going to be positive because I'm going from low to high. So this term is positive. And because this term is positive, I know that this term must be negative if they are going to add up to zero. However, there must be a point, given that this pressure is given, in which this reaches a maximum. So this needs to be negative, this needs to be positive, it needs to be equal to zero. So if I can figure out what this, you know, uh, minimum value is, I can figure out what this maximum value is, and that is going to be equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and try to figure that out. Now in terms of the pressures, we were given both of the pressures 
but let's let's see. So pressure one is 330 kilopascals, but this is a gauge pressure. And this is important because gauge pressure is equal to absolute pressure um, minus atmospheric pressure, like this. Now, in terms of um, pressure number two, so pressure number two must be uh, one atmospheric pressure or higher. So pressure number two, we want it to be at its lowest value. So we're actually just gonna take it as atmospheric pressure. So P1 is equal to um, 33.0 kilopascal. Okay, so P1 in terms of absolute pressure is gonna be because this is the gauge pressure and this is uh, your absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure. If I wanna solve for the absolute pressure so that I can use absolute pressures on both of the pressures over here, then what I need to do is pass this as a positive. So this is actually plus ATM. And this is gonna be your absolute pressure over here at this point. Now for pressure number two, uh, it must be at a minimum uh, atmospheric pressure, and that is actually what we want. We want a minimum value over here. So this is just gonna be atmospheric pressure because if we actually increase this, this will uh, decrease or it will be more towards the positive side and we actually wanna make it the most negative possible. So this is the minimum value that we're gonna work with. So let me just go ahead and substitute this on the Bernoulli equation. So let's just substitute our pressures. So this delta P is equal to final minus initial. So final minus initial, this would be, um, final is just ATM minus initial um, and then this term I'm just gonna copy now I'm just gonna these two are gonna cancel out because this one's positive and this has a negative sign over here so these two are gonna cancel out um, so this is gonna be three, three. is equal to zero. So now you can see that this being, um, you know, the smallest value that you could get over here, this is gonna give you the biggest possible value for delta Y. So all I have to do really is just substitute these two numbers. So I'm just gonna solve. This has a negative over here, which is just gonna go to the other side as a positive. And this is actually very good because this delta Y is going up. So you should really be expecting a positive answer. So rho for water is equal to 8,000 kilograms per meter cube. And then gravity, I'm just gonna go ahead and use 10. So delta Y is equal to, let's see. thirty-three. 33 meters, final answer. So at 33 meters, water is gonna stop flowing and that is gonna be the absolute, you know, highest that you can really take this and still have water go upwards. Anywhere more than 23, that's gonna make this equation fail because delta P would be, um, you know, water would just stop flowing. It would actually start flowing in the opposite direction. So 33 is really your maximum. So anyways, part B of the problem says that the actual height change uh, from points one to two is 25 meters. So we're gonna be working with 25 meters. The actual height change is 25 meters. If the resistance of the pipe is 3.5 times 10 to the four, uh, what is the current inside the pipe? Okay, so for part B, we are actually given uh, this delta y and we're giving a resistance so basically what we have to do is start over with our Bernoulli equation but now we're actually going to have this term over here 
because now we're actually gonna have a current because we're not at a maximum height, we are at a lesser height. So let's just go ahead and do that. So our complete Bernoulli equation for part B is just delta P plus rho G delta Y is equal to negative IR. Uh, in this case, I actually have this value, this value, this, and I also have R. So all I have to do really is just solve for uh, the flow, which is really what's what they're asking me, what's the current. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I is equal to, let's see, let me just solve for it, is delta P. So delta P was just this value, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write that down. Rho is equal to 8,000. G is equal to 10, or I'm gonna be using 10. Delta Y they are giving me, so it's equal to 25. And I am solving for I, so I need to divide by R. Um, and I'm just gonna drag this over here so that I can have my answer already in positive because it's a negative. So negative R is negative 3.5 times 10 to the four. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work that out over here. Oh. Uh, plus. So 2.28 um, meters cube divided by seconds, final answer. There we go. So this was just a matter of reapplying Bernoulli equation, dragging these terms since the current is not zero, uh, which you know, they are hinting that the current is not zero because they're actually asking you to find the actual value of the current, so obviously it's not zero anymore and you would just have to plug in the numbers and then just work this out again. So part three of the problem is how fast is the water moving in part B? Okay, so we need to find this velocity over here. Now this is actually gonna be very easy if we remember our definition of current. So current is equal to area times velocity. I already have the area over here and I already have my current over here. So velocity is just going to be equal to current divided by area, so 2.28 um, divided by 0 0.9 meters cubes. Everything is in SI units. So it really is just as simple as dividing 2.53. Meters, there we go, final answer. So anyway, this is the end of this problem. I hope this video was useful. Please remember to leave a like if it was. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll see you guys on the next video.